Marilyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today's play is all about round jelly plates and stencils. I'm going to be playing in my art journal and you're going to see how I build up an art journal page that I really love. But hang around for the end because that's when either third time's a charm or three strikes and you're out. You decide which one it was because there was something so obvious. But as I was playing, I totally didn't figure out what it was. It wasn't until after I went back into the voiceover that I'm like, Oh, well, that makes a lot more sense why that was happening. Anyway, enough of my talking. Come enjoy the video. So I've got my art journal here, and I've got the six-inch round jelly plate. I have put just a little bit of the fluid acrylics on from Deco Arts, and instead of cleaning my brayer off the usual way on paper, I'm going to clean it off on the other jelly plate, and I'm going to clean it off right on the art journal page. And then I am just going to plop put that jelly plate down to get this wonderful circle of imperfect color. One of the reasons why I like the jelly plate is there's always some slight variation in it to me that makes it very, very interesting. So as I grab the next color and I'm just going to continue on with this process, adding some paint onto the jelly plate. And sometimes I'll add a lot of paint and sometimes I'll add a small amount of paint. And I'll bet you're wondering if I do that on purpose. Most definitely no. It's just random how much I seem to squirt out paint wise. Now I'm going to actually mix the paint this time right on the jelly plate. So I'm taking some of a darker blue and some white and I'm just going to mix and blend them right there with the brayer. And rather than cleaning it off on paper, I'm going to clean the brayer off on the jelly plate. But I spent so long working it and it was dry enough, there's basically not a whole lot of paint left on there or it's gotten really dry. And that gave me this really cool look with this sort of peeled paint feeling to it. So it was an oops, but I really like how it turned out. Now, since I'm playing with two different sizes of circles, they can nest inside each other really nicely. Like that little one just fits so nicely inside that big one. But I have to say that I really wish that little one that I'd nested in there popped out a little bit more. So I'm going to go and redo that with a darker color of paint. So I'm really going to go dark. Well, maybe not that much darkness. I'm going to add a little white, mix that in there to lighten it up a little bit. And I'm just going to put that right back on top. It's going to end up building up layers and look nice. And I get a much darker look. Now, long ago in a galaxy far, far away, I wanted things to be perfect. So if I was trying to put a circle on something, I wanted it to be a perfect circle. But I don't live in that galaxy anymore. I live in a much better one, one where imperfections are actually interesting. If this was perfect and exactly the same every time I did it, to me, it would be far less interesting. So I love that the jelly plate makes it easy for me to have variation and slightly different looks with the exact same tool, even in the exact same play session, because how that paint sticks to the paper is always a little bit different. And I'm just going to keep adding colors, whites. I'm just playing around here, building stuff up and cleaning that brayer directly onto the pages that I'm playing with. Some of the circles I am going to be putting and layering and nesting one on top of the other. Some of them I won't. I'd like to tell you that I have a deep and carefully thought out plan about this, but no, no, I'm really just playing and letting myself go to town. In fact, I was really only going to do one page in this. I wasn't going to do a two page spread but I was having so much fun, I didn't want to stop. And since this is play, I don't have to stop. If I want to do two pages, I can. Now, if you don't have these jelly plates or the stencils that I'm about to use in a minute here in the video, then you can actually win them. There is a giveaway happening between my blog and also at Stencil Girl Talk with a blog post by Mary Beth Shaw. And in those, if you comment on each blog post, you get a chance to win. So that's a two chances there to win these jelly plates and stencils. But by the way, you kind of got to hurry. Now, if you're watching this after the giveaway closes, never fear. Get signed up for our newsletters. That way you'll know next time there's a giveaway and I'm sure there will be more giveaways in the future. Well, now I'm going to add a little stenciling with the never ending calendar stencils here. They're both round and they fit perfectly on the four inch jelly plate for the four inch stencil and the six inch jelly plate works perfectly with the six inch stencil. Now there are all sorts of ways that you can use these together and I'm going to focus this time on stenciling within the circles and shapes that were created with the jelly plate. So I'm going to be needing something to help me stencil precisely because I'm not going to stencil the entire stencil. I'm going to pick and choose. I'm going to be using a cosmetic sponge because they're easiest to control, but I want a smaller cosmetic sponge. I don't want a big, big one. And I'm going to show you how I get the little ones. This is a dried up sponge that I put in paint yesterday. 
And all I do is cut the bottom off. And you can see how as you use it up and cut it off, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And that means my painting surface gets more and more narrow. That allows me to be very precise without having to actually do any work. So you can see how much smaller my surface areas get. Like there's the big original one and you can kind of see how it gets smaller and smaller. So depending on how much area I'm covering, I can pick and choose what size I want. And the reason I have all these is I just keep saving them. As I use some, I cut it off and I've got a bunch in a drawer to pick from. I'm going to be using some white paint for this one. And what I'm going to do is just the numbers. I don't want to do the months that are around on this stencil. I just want the numbers to go in this dark blue area. So I get the stencil all lined up where I want it. And then I'm going to put the cosmetic sponge in the paint. It is very important that you actually put the sponge in the paint. This will become, well, relevant a little bit later in the video. As I'm doing this, I am not using the exact, exact same amount of paint as I'm doing it. So some of the numbers are going to be a little bit darker, bolder, and some will be a little bit lighter. Like the 20, it's darker. And I really like that variation that's in it. I don't want it to look exactly the same. Well, I'm going to let that dry, and now I'm going to take the 6x6 never-ending calendar and put that on one of the 6x6 circles made with the jelly plate. This time, though, because I'm covering a larger area, I'm going to grab the bigger cosmetic sponge just so it goes faster. I could use the little one if I wanted, but I'm all about how to make things go quickly, and, well, a bigger sponge will help me stencil faster. Same exact thing done with the smaller one, just done with the bigger one. And I am doing just the numbers on this one. Well, now I'm going to work with the months on the little one. I'm still letting that first one dry because I've got an idea for that, but I want to make sure everything's dry. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to take the 4x4 stencil and the smallest cosmetic sponge, and I am just going to stencil the months. I'm not doing any of the numbers. I'm just working my way around the edge, and I don't have to mask anything off because the cosmetic sponge is small enough that it's just going over the words that I want. So I'm making this ring of all of the months of the year. Now, so far you've seen me do all of the months or all of the numbers, but it's not like these things come with a legal binding contract that you must use all or a certain way. See how I just turned that one? December and January don't have to be at the top. I turned it so I had a couple other months, and I'm not actually going to do the entire circle. I'm just going to do part of it going along that round blue that was behind the other stuff. Well, I think that first one that I did is more than dry, so I am now going to add the months in the larger ring outside it. So I'm combining the numbers from the smaller stencil and the words or the months from the larger. And notice how I turned it. January and December do not always have to be at the top. So why am I fiddling with the sponges so much? Because I'm trying to find the one that's just the right size. I don't want it to be too small because then I have to do more work than I want to do. Or, and I don't want it to be too big because then I have to pay attention and be careful. But if I get one just the right size, it'll go fast and I don't actually have to be that careful. And I'm able to just do the months here. Adding a little more paint to make sure they're nice and bright. Well, now I'm going to come in and just add some little partial ghosty kind of layers of the numbers and the words from the stencil. All I'm doing is just stenciling little bits. I want little touches of it, not a whole lot, just hints of things, as if some of it had been worn away or weathered. So just a little bit, adding just touches here and there so you can see just ghosts and hints of it. Now, one of the things that's going to be really important for this is paint. So as I'm going around and doing this one, as I lift it up, I can't see a thing that I did there. Apparently, I need a little more paint. So now I'm going to go and do it again. I know to get more paint, so there should be more paint. I'm even going to push a little bit harder. And what's going to happen? Pretty much nothing. Turns out each time I'm going and thinking I'm grabbing paint, I'm not really grabbing the paint. So it's really important when you do this that you actually put the cosmetic sponge in the paint. If you don't actually put more paint on your sponge, you really don't get any more stenciling done. And about this point with my third attempt, I'm going to take that as the big hint that I'm not supposed to put it right there because no matter what I did, I just didn't seem to be able to get more paint onto that cosmetic sponge. And I am going to take a hint from the curve on that yellow circle that's there, and I'm going to put just some of the months along that curve. And I can turn this any way I want so that I can have whatever months there that I want. And I'm going to add some paint. Yes, this time I did actually put paint on the cosmetic sponge, so oddly enough, it works better. Well, as I'm finishing up these art journal pages, there's just one thing still missing, and that's some writing, some kind of journaling what my thoughts are. And for that, I'm going to grab a white pen, and I'm going to start just scribbling down my thoughts. 
Well, thanks for joining me for today's play. If you've enjoyed this play, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button. That way you'll never miss when I have a new video out. And most definitely, if you know somebody that you think would enjoy this video, feel free to share it with them. I'd actually really appreciate that. Now, if you'd like more play and fun, head on over to my blog at acolorfuljourney.com, both for the giveaway for this, as well as to check out all the other goodies I have over on my blog, including a free workshop called Permission to Play. Thanks for being a part of this colorful journey. <laughs>